Hey you, welcome back. So in the previous video, we're looking at namespaces. And in here, I want us to look at how to auto load uh, classes when you are dealing with uh, namespaces. Now let's look at a very basic example. So it's the index.php, I'll delete everything. Same thing here, I'm just going to add a normal class in here. I'm just going to say class as usual, book, or let's use something more class product, like so. And then I'm just going to say function construct. And I just want to echo that uh, a product was created, like so. Okay, so if I come to my index page here and uh, the thing is, you know, I can have several classes like this. So let's create another class. I'm going to rename this from book to product, obviously, because it contains the product class. And let me create another file here. I want to just copy what's inside the product, copy, paste it here, save this. And this one, instead of product, uh, let's say it's, I don't know, I'm running out of words here. Let's just say it's a car. So car, though car is a product as well. Eh. And yeah, that's how it is. So class car, and then this other one, class product. So I'm just going to say car was created here. Now, the thing is, in order for me to use those uh, classes in here, in my PHP file, I have to include them. So I'm just going to say include, because before I do, okay, let me do this though, uh, product.php, and then I'm simply going to duplicate this and say uh, car.php. But for now, I'm going to comment these out. Let's imagine they're not there. And then I try something like car is equal to new car. Wait, are these capitalized? Yes, they are. New car, like so. Okay, so if I come back here and refresh my page, it's going to tell me that uh, class car was not found. Now, the reason is because the file is nowhere to be found. But if I include the file of car here, okay, and refresh, all is well, it's going to say car was created. But then if I want to include product as well, I'll have to include the file as well. So product, let me type product here as well. Okay, so here if, let me come back here for a second, I forget my break tags. They are crucial, essential workouts right there. There we go. Uh -huh. So let's come back and refresh the page. Uh -huh. So it's saying class product was not found and that is because we haven't included it either. Now you can imagine if I keep adding um, classes, right? If I keep adding classes on and on and on, this list is going to grow very big very quickly. And then the problem is that every time I include a file, I'm actually increasing the size of index.php because it's not every time that I'm going to you to need the car.php file. If I'm not going to be using the car, uh, I'm not going to be saying car is equal to new car at any point. So let's say you have many pages. You have, uh, you have the index page, you have products page and so on. Each of those pages needs a very different class to run it doesn't need all of them. But because of the nature of these things, you'll be forced to include all of those classes at once, which increases the overhead unnecessarily, makes your file bigger than it should be. So a better way to do it is to autoload these things. So let's see how that can be done. So here, let's begin with uh, just the, the car right there. And then I'm just going to remove all this so we leave car is equal to new car. Now, of course, if we refresh the page, it's going to tell us the class is nowhere to be found. But then there's a function called uh, SPL 
auto load. Okay, so SPL auto load uh, register right there. Okay, so it takes a one argument that is um, required. There are some that are optional, but we're not going to mind those. Now, this one is of a function. So you have to pass in a function. Now you can create an anonymous function or you can actually name the function. So let's try and name the function instead. So say function uh, find, I'm just going to find say find class like so. And in here, I'm going to pass in the class name. Now, this is just a variable. Remember that you can just call it A if you want. But whatever variable you add here is going to receive the name of the, the, the class that you're trying to access, which does not exist. So what's happening here is that we're registering a function. So let's put the name of the function as a string here like so. So we're telling it that uh, this function is responsible. Every time we have a missing class, call this function. So here I can just say uh, echo out. Let's echo out here. A class is missing, like so. Okay, so let's come back here and let's redo this. So before that function, this is what we got. We got a fatal error, meaning that the program cannot continue anymore. So it has stopped at that point. So if I refresh now, we still get the error, but now we have this a class is missing. So which means it actually ran just because the class was missing. Okay, so if I typed in the wrong name there of the function, what happens? Well, we'll get something else. It's going to say the callback function was not found. Okay, so which means it is working. So whenever there's a missing class, this comes into play. But how do we know what class is missing? So this is where we have this argument that we're going to add here. Uh, a class named, maybe we can do this and then put this in the middle, like so. Put a space like that. Mm -hmm. A class named, whatever the class name is, is missing. So let's come back here and refresh. So you see a class named car is missing. So it knows which class we are trying to uh, get. So instead of complaining about it, what we can do is try to find it at this point because we've been given an opportunity to do something about it. So instead, we're going to say include. And then I'm going to put the class name. And then I'm going to add .php at the end there, like so. So be careful that uh, you add the dot in here as well, not just that one. This is for joining the two strings and this is part of the file name. So we're going to get that and that. So if, for example, you had changed your uh, th th this is this is working because the name of the class is exactly the name of the the file itself. So we can just use the class name to find the file itself. And we know that our files are lowercase, right? But here, if you notice, car is being brought in as uppercase because our our um, class itself has uppercase. So what we can do is use the function here, uh, string to lower, to make sure that we take it to the lower side. This is not a problem in Windows, but once you get online and you're using Linux, it's going to be a problem because in Linux, uh, file names are case sensitive. So it's a good idea to do this like so. Okay, so let's see what happens instead of getting an error. So car was created. So you see, this is more efficient. We'll have only one include file here. Now to see that the power of this is that if I add both of these, I haven't included, there's only one line to include here. That's all. But then it will add every class that I need, refresh. So you see now every time I need the class, it's there. So this is a more efficient way of doing things. Now, you don't have to, uh, create a separate function. You can add the function as a, you can pass it in directly here. 
So to do that, you can just add function right there and say function like so. And then you add your class name there and then open and close bracket like so. But then because we want to add more code than just one line, we do that. And then all I need to do is copy that, put it there. Then I don't need this anymore. So it's the same thing. Uh, it's just that this is a kind of a single line. So if I refresh, it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is all well and good. But what if your, uh, your classes, the, your files are named differently? Let's say, for example, we have, let me rename this from product to product dot include or maybe dot class, that makes more sense, dot PHP, so enter. And then rename this one as well, car dot class dot PHP. So now we're going to have a problem because those files will not be found. So as you can see, failed to open stream, blah, 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 it's complaining. Now the reason it's complaining is because it can't find the files, of course. So because I know that every class file is dot class dot something, then I just, just put dot class there as part of the file name, that's it. And then it becomes exactly the same. Okay, then we are back to normal. So this is all well and good. The only problem is uh, when it comes to namespaces. So let me come to car here and let's create a namespace. I'm going to say namespace app. I'm just going to call it app uh, cars, something like that. Let me use capitals. It's, very, it's a good idea to use capital letters there so that you don't get confused in future. So this one belongs to cars, app cars, and this one belongs to app product. So we put them in different uh, namespaces just in case we can repeat the class names. Okay, <clears throat> so what problem do we have now? If I refresh, just by changing the namespaces, if I refresh now, I'm going to have a problem because it's going to say class car not found, okay? So how is this possible? Well, that's because we're now using namespaces, right? Oops, what have I done? Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so the class was not found. Hmm. Okay, so what do we do here? Let's include the namespace, right? <clears throat> So we have app products and app cars. So copy this, let's come into index. And right here, I'm just going to say use the same way we had done those before. So I want us to use products, um, product. That's the name of the class, right? And I also want us to use the one for car. So I'm going to come here and car like that here we have cars capito all right so normally this should work because we've imported uh, the correct namespaces and the correct classes and so everything should work but uh, let's try it okay so what is it complaining about it's saying failed to open the stream on the includes. Hmm, I wonder why that is. So the curious thing is, let's come back here. Instead of putting include, let's remove include and let's just echo out what class name it's trying to, to retrieve actually. So I'm going to close one so that we just deal with car, which is just one of these. Refresh one thing at a time. So you see, this is what it gets in there. So this is what it's receiving. It's receiving app, cars, and then car, right? Which is a problem because if we add up those things, it means it's looking for uh, a folder that is actually named app, cars, and then it's looking for the file car, and then it's going to add in front of this and say dot class dot PHP. So this folder does not exist. This is just a namespace. So what can we do to resolve this problem? So we can just split the name just to tell it to get just the very last part here and do what we want with that. So easy peasy. 
what we're going to do is say class name is equal to let's explode the class name here what we are delimiting is the slash this one right here we want to explode so that we can get these names separately and then just get the very last one but if your files do exist in this folder this could be an advantage so keep that in mind now the thing is this slash is an escape uh, character so what it has done is it has escaped this it's telling php that this is not a inverted comma which is part of this no this is just a literal string so in order to get rid of this escaping we do it twice like so so even though there are two of these i'm just talking about one of them one is escaping the other i'm just telling it that this slash is a literal slash and not a special character so you put two of those even though you mean just one and then here we're going to tell it to explode use uh, what is it exploding it's exploding the class name so let's put that there so now the result of an explode is an array so we just want the very last thing in the array because it's always the class name so we're going to say class name is equal to this time and i'm going to use array pop because array pop just gets the last item in the array so i'm just going to say class name since class name is an array now we're going to send it back here as a string just the last item as a string and put it there okay so that should solve our problem if i now refresh car was created and if i try the other one as well there we go refresh product was created Okay, so this is how you can use the autoload system in conjunction with namespaces and autoloading of classes. So I do hope you have learned uh, something new and I will see you in the next video.